I am going to start a session as the recent of biomedical engineering. Recently, there are so many things that are emerging towards biomedical engineering. Now we are discussing our topic especially as the recent trends in biomedical engineering. What are all the recent trends available and what are all the healthcare department is going for and how far this healthcare department needed this biomedical engineering students, all the things we are going to discuss today. Okay, first of all, uh, I'm, I'm, who am I? I'm just going to give us some of the small intro about me. To myself, Athena Malahi Pondian, Alayis Athena Pondian. I started my career uh, in the biomedical engineering. I'm a graduate in a biomedical engineering, Bachelor of Engineering and Master of Engineering, Biomedical Engineering. And uh, I did my Master of Business Administration in Hospital Management. And I did my post-graduation in Hospital Management. And I have uh, 30, 15 years of experience in teaching and 10 years of experience in corporate. I started a company especially for the biomedical engineers because almost uh, my uh, so 15 to 30 percentage of my life is spent with biomedical engineering. We started a company, Athena Pontian Private Limited, that is especially for uh, biomedical engineers. We are uh, training, we are trained them, we are giving our placement training, we are giving online courses and what are all the uh, benefits a particular uh, person can able to get, can able to, uh, we are producing so many uh, um, guest lectures and webinars also from the uh, senior officials from all over the countries. So that is what a small intro about me. So we're, now we are straight away entering into the topic, recent trends in biomedical engineering. Okay. So here, first of all, everyone says that whatever the webinars, whatever the seminars or whatever the guest lecture it may be, everyone starts with what is biomedical engineering. Also, uh, uh, most of them are now uh, in second year, I think so. Uh, those were all, even though you are well known about biomedical engineering, because everyone says that once you're entering into the biomedical engineering, everyone says that that is a connection between the human anatomy and electronics. Somebody says that that is a mixture of human anatomy, electronics and instrumentation, all the things. Of course, I'm, I'm, I'm sure about it. Everything is right. But in my point of view, I have some of the suggestions. I have some of the clear definition, uh, the prop definition for the biomedical engineering. But as bio, we can able to divide the biomedical engineering into bio plus medical plus engineer. In the bio, we can say as that uh, bio, of course, you all know that the living organisms. Here in this biomedical engineering, the word bio indicates the human being, especially the human being. Then the medical, medical is nothing but of course, the medical is a terminology, especially coming under the healthcare. In the healthcare, there are so many sectors are there. The doctors are there, nurses are there, doctors, helpers are there. Of course, the engineers are there. Then the management people, those who are constructing the hospitals are there. There are so many people that is coming under the medical. But the most important thing is that you just connect the first word and the second word. Bio, the human beings, straight away go to the medical hospital, especially for seeing the doctors. Okay, that is a very important thing. What is the purpose of seeing the doctor? The, uh, the particular patient approach the doctor. Doctor, can you please find out what has happened to me? Because my uh, uh, my organs are not functioning properly. I am not in the control mode because I am affected by some or I am affected by some of the disorders. You can able to please predict me what has happened to my body. Like that, the patient will approach. That is a like that the human being will approach to the doctor. So during the time, the doctors are supposed to catch out, or the doctors are supposed to find out what has happened to the body of the particular patient. What is the exact disease of the particular patient? What is the uh, in, in, uh, inappropriate thing happen in this human body. The doctors can able to predict in his uh, naked eye, 50 percentage only the doctors can able to find out what is exactly happened in the particular human body. 50 percentage only he can able to find out. Next word, engineering. The engineering people, they are to some of the devices to the doctors. The doctors, the doctor, can you please use this particular device? Using this particular device, you can able to predict the uh, uh, disorder of the particular person and 100 percent you can able to find out. So using the particular devices or using the particular equipment, the second word doctor can able to find out what has happened in the human body exactly. So without the engineering devices, without the particular engineering people developed the device, the doctors can't able to give the 100 percent surety about the particular disease or particular disorder or particular injury. We can able to say the 50 percent surety only about the particular disease. Along with the equipment only, along with the devices only, 
even the doctors can predict the doctors can give you surety about the particular disease this is the disease you are affected by this is the disorder you are affected by this is the injury you are affected by all these the things can able to say only because of the engineering device that engineering devices can be manufactured that engineering devices can be a uh, selling that engineering devices can able to make a troubleshooter that engineering devices can able to give the demo to the doctors that engineering devices can able to check whether this particular devices is giving harmful to the users or the, the doctors all the things can able to done by the engineers all the biomedical engineers so the most important thing is even though the healthcare department required doctors the doctors required the equipment there are so many engineering departments are there uh, nowadays there are 20 plus engineering departments are there like uh, electrical departments electronics department aeronautical civil there are lot lot there are so many engineering departments are there of course some of the departments 50 percentage or 25 percentage they are connected to the healthcare department healthcare sector but the only department the only engineering sector that is 100 percentage connected to the healthcare sector that is biomedical engineering of course the biotechnology the 50 percentage that is connected to the uh, healthcare sector of course the pharmaceutical technology the 50 percentage connected to that then the electrical electronics all the things 50 percentage or 25 percentage they are connected to the healthcare sector but the 100 percentage whatever the thing happen in the healthcare sector according to the disease according to the uh, equipment devices manufacturing or whatever it may be so 100 percentage that is directly connected to the healthcare department the only engineering department is biomedical engineer of course this biomedical engineering is called as a clinical engineering in south asia people in uh, northeast people european countries most of them they not called as a biomedical engineer they are called as a clinical engineers okay that is what the department is that is what the department you, you must know about the clarity about the department what you are study first of all and then only you can able to give the foundation then only you can able to give the um, basics of everything okay that is what in my point of view the bio that is a human being medical that is a doctors engineering along with the devices that is manufactured by the engineering people these three word combinedly called as a biomedical engineering without any of this especially the third word if it is not there the doctors can't able to predict the sub can't able to predict some of the diseases so if you if the doctors can't able to predict some of the diseases what happen to the human beings the human beings can't able to take the medicine so that is what even though the human being approach to the doctors the doctors approach to the engineers that is called as the biomedical engineers that is what you need to know about okay see of course even though there is an engineering department even though the biomedical engineering is very important all the things 100 percentage clarity given by the given to the doctors without the equipment because there are over 15000 biomedical equipments are there please remember there are 15000 biomedical 15000 plus biomedical equipments are there in that we can able to classify the biomedical engineer biomedical equipments into three different ways one is a minor equipments minor equipments in the way we can call as a thermometer spectrometer and then uh, we can give for uh, uh, a blood pressure monitor all the things stethoscope these are all the minor equipments then major equipment the second category all the scanning devices especially the radiological equipment scanning devices or the major equipment like ct scan x ray scan linear accelerator all the thing are coming under the major and the critical equipments are there nowadays the ventilators use very uh, very main part then the patient monitoring system defibrillators suction pump infusion pump all things are critical equipment so this minor and major and critical equipments totally 15000 biomedical equipments are there you know there are four different hospitals are there there is a small clinics required biomedical equipment the small specialty hospital required biomedical equipment the small general hospital required biomedical equipment the multi specialty hospital the government authenticated hospital is also required biomedical equipment without the equipment the doctors can't able to predict nowadays so that is a very important the doctors know only about the human organs the doctors only know about the normality and abnormality of the human organs that is what then how we can able to find out that particular normality and the new abnormality of the patient without the device the doctors can't able to predict because that uh, the doctors are not a, a god they they can't able to see the internal organs through their naked eye 
through the scanning devices only the doctors can able to predict what is happening in the organ so that is what the important is you must know about the importance of the biomedical engineering department first of all so that is what the uh, the definition is there then now i am going to say coming to the topic i am just give the uh, small introduction about biomedical engineering because i am very glad to i uh, uh, rather i am introducing myself i am very uh, uh, happy to introduce about the biomedical engineering that is what i am giving uh, this kind of uh, introduction about biomedical engineering so here now we are just entering to the topic now so what are all the recent technologies what are all the recent technologies that is minded over that is built and over the biomedical engineering that is what we are talking about now so the first of all assisting technology assisting technology means that it will support it will support to the human organ for example i am saying the small wheelchair the patient the, the human being is affected by the injury the human being is affected by the lower limb injury the patient can't able to walk during that that particular wheelchair will help without the wheelchair what happened in the 50 years back the another person the another person lift the particular person to move on. Go around or walk around. So that particular wheelchair is the best example for the assistive technology. But nowadays the wheelchair is a old model. The wheelchair is a old model. Each and every day, uh, for example, if you are taking a hundred projects, if you are taking a hundred engineering projects for the biomedical engineering, in that the twenty to twenty-five percentage of the projects are relating with the wheelchair only, because there are so many modernized wheelchairs are available nowadays. Okay, like that, like that. Not only I am talking about the wheelchair. There are so many assistive technologies out there. There are so many assisted. We can able to say as the prosthetic devices, the prosthetic devices are the recent technologies. The prosthetic devices manufacturing is very important because 50 years back or 30 years back even, the 30 to 35 years back, if the person is affected, if met with any accident, the person is met with any accident, if the person is lost their legs, if they lost their both the legs, what the doctor say, you are not doing, you are not supposed to do anything. You just please go to the home, go to home. And lay down on the bed, and please spend your years like that. Is the doctors will say, but the biomedical engineer introduces the prosthetic devices. That prosthetic devices will give the life to the person. That the, the prosthetic devices will give the life to the particular person those who are injured. So that is what the prosthetic arm is there, the prosthetic uh, leg is there, prosthetic hip replacement is there, bionic eye is there. All the thing is coming under the assistive technology. So we can able to give the life to the hip, even though the doctors uh, uh, open their hand. The doctors open their hand, and now we can't able to do something. We are can't able to do anything. The biomedical engineers not open their hands. They just uh, hold the hand. They just take the hand of the patient. We are giving the life to you through this prosthetic device. We can able to make it. At the same time, the making of prosthetic devices is not a simple matter. The making of prosthetic device is not a simple matter. Because the human organ function is same for each and every person, but the human structure, the human mechanics, the human biomechanics is entirely different for each and every person. For example, I am saying, if you are walking, the rhythm of walking is entirely different for each and every person. If you want to make a prosthetic devices of the particular person, you need to observe what is the rhythm of the rhythm attained by the person. According to that, only we can able to make the device. So you need to make the inclination of each and every joints, of course. For example, if you want to make a knee replacement, you can able to have a knowledge about the biomechanics. If you have a knowledge about the biomechanics, only you can able to make this prosthetic device. That is very important. I like that. Seventy-five percent of the human organ can able to replace, can able to replace by the uh, uh, artificial organs. Okay, that are all done by the engineers called the biomedical engineers. Not other engineers can't able to do. Even though they are strong in electrical, even though they are strong in electronics, the engineers, those who are knowing about the human organs, along with the human organs, the engineer should know about the electrical and electronics. The engineer should know about the instrumentation along with that. That people only can able to make these kind of prosthetic devices. If you have a knowledge about the electronics. If you are not, if you are, you are not eligible to make a prosthetic devices, because you should have some of the knowledge about the human organ. Then only you can able to find out where is the knee, what is the exact inclination attained by the knee, what is the exact load the particular knee can be attained. So that is what each and everything is very important. That is called as a biomechanics. Please make a note of it. Biomechanics is a very important part. 
once you are making for any assistive technology processing devices okay that is what then uh, we can able to go for it just i, I, I uh, um the best example for uh, the people those who are not having the leg the particular person not having a lower limb and also the and also the upper limb the doctors can't able to do anything because the doctors only check whether this particular organ is functioning or not if the particular organ is not functioning the doctor can able to operate okay operate and then make a, a troubleshoot that particular your particular organ and then make it function but the particular organ is last the lower limb and the, and the upper limb is totally last the doctor is can't able to do anything if the organ is there if the organ is injured the doctor can able to make a suggestion make a clarification but the organ is not there the doctor is what to do the doctor can't able to do anything so this person this person get a life only because of the biomedical engineers because of this prosthetic devices because of this assisting devices this person having assisted assisted devices and also the prosthetic devices the wheelchair and also is a pram so that is what the engineering department is and then of course this particular lady this particular lady having some of the prosthetic arm he lost his uh, he lost his uh, arm to, uh, um to any accident or whatever it may be this particular prosthetic arm will give her life so that is a very important thing you need to know about it about this particular prosthetic technology has already made significant strides significant strides in recent decades because so many of them get benefited nearly each and every day 12.5 percentage of accident happens in that 6.85 percentage of the people lost their legs and lost their uh, uh, highly injured people that particular persons are needed some of the prosthetic devices so that is what i'm saying that is what i'm saying the prosthetic technology has already made a significant strides in recent decades so that is what thanks to advances in materials and development of course if you want to make any prosthetic devices if you want to make any prosthetic devices what are all the materials you are supposed to use that is very important that what are all the materials you are supposed to use whether you are going to use a metal or whether you are going to use a non metal whether you are going to use a stainless steel or tungsten whatever according to that according to the area you are going to replace that is very important it should be a corrosion resistant most importantly the term the term called the bio compatibility whatever the material it may be it should be a bio compatible material that is a very important thing you need to note about it okay so that is what that is what each and every thing thanks to the advances in materials and development prosthetics are not only a lighter and easier to use but more advanced than even before each and every day each and every day that uh, fda approved so many equipments somewhere in some corner of the world they are inventing some of the new technology in biomedical equipment so that is what i'm telling about again however the biomedical engineers are working on even more advanced prosthetics than can only be referred to as bionic of course you are all well know about the bionic bionic is nothing but a bionic eye bionic patients there are so many things are coming under the bionic i am particularly say i'm about the bionic eye the eye can be replaced i said i have if your eye get damaged if your eye get injured if you are if you are can't able to see anything no problem our biomedical engineers can replace your natural eye as like as a natural eye he created an artificial eye we can able to create we can able to replace it so that is what the technology is that is what the, the technology is see of course we are all know about it in the in the olympic 2016 the prosthetic leg patient the prosthetic handled and uh, the prosthetic handled patient will attain the 200 meter race will attain the 200 meter race. that is very important he can he can able to uh, achieve their goal because of the engineers because of the biomedical engineers this particular prosthetic devices if you know about the sports mechanics if you know about the sports mechanics then only you can able to create this particular uh, prosthetic legs the pair of prosthetic legs because you need to uh, you need to know about the load you need to measure the load bmi of the particular person the bmi of the particular person is very important to me because this particular prosthetic devices will lift over this particular kilograms then you he, he 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 can stretch the legs he can stretch the how far this particular person can able to stretch the leg how far the inclination at time how far the knee will bend all 
all the things can be coming under the sports mechanics please remember please make a note of it the sports mechanics is a sub domain of the biomechanics so if you go for the uh, processory devices or if you go for the assistive technology or artificial organ whatever it may be you should aware about the biomechanics basics the basics of biomechanics will give the clarity about what is a human organ and how we can able to replace that particular human natural organ into the artificial organ so that is what the technology is see the next example almost uh, next example the prosthetic hand this particular however the biomedic Hello. Yam, can you hear me? Yam, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yam, please don't go out. Okay, yeah, because okay. I got a call. That's why the mic has disconnected. That's why. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. No, uh, don't do this. Uh, thank okay. you. I will share the screen again. Ah. Eh? Okay. So, report it. and now you can able to view the screen right anyone any any reply please can everyone can view the uh, slides here yes sir yes sir yeah thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you can you please mute yourself so that is what uh, i am talking about assistive technology uh, sorry for the interrupt uh, what is what in fact some projects most of the project not some projects i am telling about most of the engineering project especially from iit iit they are in today they are in fact they are uh, um, announcing so many prosthetic devices so many prosthetic devices especially they are developing almost uh, 21.5% of the projects in healthcare even though the person is coming under the uh, uh, metallurgy the person is coming under the electrical or electronics he is supposed to do the project in healthcare that is where the 21.5% of the projects coming out from the iit is belongs to the healthcare sector of course you are all know that that was the 10 days back the iit madras secured the number one place i don't know i don't know this is the i don't know uh, this is the exact reason about it but this is also one of the reason the 21.5% invention of the uh, uh, healthcare sector equipment that introduction to the society that will give benefit benefactory to so many patients so that is what this particular assistive technology is a very very important technology if you have interested towards in making any prosthetic devices this assistive technology play a main vital role you should aware about biomechanics you should aware about the sports mechanics you should aware about the export systems 
so that is what then, then we uh, move to the next technology of course i uh, this is the uh, um, i'm saying a bionic eye this is the artificial eye we are talking about this is the bionic eye this particular eye can be replaced by your natural eye okay this particular eye have same as that of the layers what is present in your your natural eye is along with the present in this particular bionic eye okay so this particular thing and we can able to guess this is the fixed the fixed bionic eye is there as like as a natural eye we can able to aware about this particular bionic eye is resembling the same thing if you want to make this if you want to make this you know you, you should aware about the basic physics the basic physics is very important what about the light intensity how much amount of light intensity the particular bionic eye will acquire at the same time you should know about the biomechanics how far this particular eye can able to attain the movement how far this particular eye can able to attain the inclination of course the basic physics and the basic uh, uh, biomechanics is also very important this particular technology assistive technology so that is what we are talking about this these are all the thing found able to make by some of the other uh, department people even the doctors can't able to make this the doctors can able to surgery surgery the particular particular natural organ to replace by some other natural organ but if you want to replace the natural organ by the artificial uh, implants only the engineers can able to so that is what the improving assistive technology is much more nowadays if you are take over in the research 10 years back 10 years back the assistive technology is very low but nowadays most of the other department people most of the other sector people they are start manufacturing they are start doing the projects towards the healthcare that is what that is what the reason is the healthcare sector is always there in the top because of not because of the doctors not because of the nurses they are all just the helpers we are the engineers they are they are we are the engineers we are the especially the engineers because of as one lead this particular healthcare technology is put the first place everywhere every time so that is what then uh, we go for uh, actually the assistive technology is getting more the chip enabled prosthetic arm is the newly uh, developed the chip enabled prosthetic arm on the horizon but so are limbs that have more ability mobility and the flexibility or even axillary motors that can be help to provide additional strength and power making the limb easier to use of course if you are if you are well known about if you have a knowledge about uh, how to make the prosthetic guys this particular thing especially axillary motors axillary motors is the new motor that is a new inventing uh, devices that will give the exact inclination what a particular person is made before that uh, the small deflection in the inclination but this particular motor give the mobility and the flexibility of the particular person as like as a natural uh, natural upper and lower limb so that is what i am talking about if you are having a knowledge about that particular basic biomechanics then this point will be able to uh, uh, give a clarity okay and then of course moving beyond prosthetic engineers are working on additional robotic devices of course of course in america in usa we are seven years back seven years back that is a robot called the davinci the robot name called the davinci you know go you, you can make you can make it in the google you can make it in the google uh, uh, da, what is davinci robot that particular davinci robot attain a major surgery attain a major surgery it attain a major surgery and successful surgery that is very important without any help of the doctors and nurses that particular da, davinci robot will made a major surgery successful major surgery that is also happened in seven years back but nowadays there are so many surgical robots are there that will help the doctors that will help the nurses that will help the uh, help in the operation theaters and yeah, the thing this one the thing this one the thing created by the biomedical engineers not the other sort of engineers right so that is what uh, happened and then of course this is the technology we can uh, uh, making of device is very simple please remember making of device is very simple we need to make the particular devices attain the inclination is much more difficult if you want to lift the particular apple if you want to pick the particular flower if you want to pick any of the uh, cloth if you want to pick some of the hand whatever it may be you need to give the uh, point not 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 one percentage of the clarity about the biomechanics to the particular equipment devices then only the particular equipment can able to lift the device the lift the particular thing 
Hey, these are all the things. That is a small, small thing is very important. Okay, then I just go for the robotic exoskeleton. The robotic, I already told you. For instance, researchers are developing a robotic exoskeleton to assist people with muscles weakness and other mobility issues. Essentially, the exoskeleton will allow the individual to function in home and community. Of course, without the help of any other person, without the help of any, without assisting any other people, the robot can assist the people. Those who are injured, the robot can do some of the homework. The robot can do some of the uh, community people work. So all this can be done by, all this can be done by the engineers. Okay, whatever the the patient required, the whatever the patient required, the fifty percentage of the thing the doctors will give, the fifty percentage of the thing the engineers will do. Okay, that is why the full fluctuation is arriving. That is what happened. about the robotic assistive technologies the robotic assistive technology for other healthcare functions are also in development for instance engineers are working on robotic assistants that can help provide us with the lifting and transfer of patients to prevent injuries of course if you want to transfer the patients nowadays we are using the wheelchair right the robot can able to lift the uh, shift the patients from uh, one floor to other floor if you want to if you want to uh, make the patient to move into the operation theater that particular uh, devices will help in my research in my research in 2025 in 2030 or 2035 no need of the nurses no need of the doctors even all the thing is done by the equipment yes of course it is happen it is going to happen nowadays it is going to happen within a, a 10 to 15 years everything can be done by the machine everything can be done by the dental 75% 80% of the thing happen whatever happen in the hospital can be done by the machine So all the things happen within a ten to fifteen years because of these technologies. What does the nurse will do? The nurse will check whether this particular person have normal or abnormal range. That can be replaced by the. No, the robot. Hello. The person is normal or abnormal. All the things. What what the doctor will do? The doctor will check whatever he can able to see in the naked eye. According to the symptoms caused by the particular person, the doctor can able to suggest this is a disorder. Yeah, through the machine learning and through the artificial intelligence, the robot can able to find out what has happened to the what happened to the particular person. The robot and machine learning uh, app itself scan the scan the particular patient's internal internal organs. That particular devices will check what has happened exactly in the organ. So all the things happen within the within a ten uh, to fifteen years. The doctors and nurses, so many of them, are replaced by the robots because of these technological development because. Uh, Robotic technology is very very booming. Much amount of booming has happened. Of course, in the Belgium, the Belgium highly educated uh, percentage in all over the world. The Belgium engineers and experts that were Belgium engineers, they are start manufacturing so many robots for the healthcare technology. That is what I am giving the surety. Within a ten to fifteen years, this will happen. Okay, then, of course. Next technology, what you are talking about is, of course, of course, you have a um, enough amount of basic information about the assistive technology and robotic technology. The next information I am going to give is medical imaging. Just take an example of 10 to 15 years back, only X-ray or CT or MRI, but nowadays everything imaging. Whatever the small organ is, whatever the small diameter organ. Your external equipment easily pick your signal. That is what the imaging is. They easily predict over where the exact problem is. Okay, of course, in the nineteen eighteen seventy five, in eighteen ninety five exactly. Sorry, eighteen ninety five. Every biomedical engineer should not forget this particular year, eighteen ninety five. That is a revolutionary era, especially for the radiology. Mr. William Rangent introduced the X-ray. that particular x-ray is a basic seed for the development of the radiology nowadays the advancement of the x-ray is invented by the advancement of the x-ray is nothing but a computer aided tomography that is cat scan okay that can be done by the hornsfield hornsfield the scientist that will uh, created in the year of 18 i'm sorry 1970s in the 1972 exactly okay the hornsfield The Hornsfield introduced the CT. That is an advancement of the X-ray. Then, after that, 
advancement of the ct is mri that can be introduced by the damadian raymond damadian okay without the radiation we can able to see the internal organs so like that mri will be developed you must note about the duration of the year. the development the advancement of the, the the invention of the advancement of the x ray is done from the 1895 to 1970 almost 75 years are required to give the next technology but after that 1971 to 1972 this particular cat machine hounsfield introduced a cat machine and then within a 5 to 6 years the raymond damadian introduced the mri and then each and every year the imaging technology is booming nowadays the robots can able to be already told you the robots can personally scan the particular internal organs of the patient to predict what is happen exactly for the patient that is what the development is of course the medical imaging is no longer limited to simple 2d x ray that are all gone through okay we already have ultrasound we already have ct scan we already have magnetic resonance imaging and the host of other technologies of course there are so many things are there imaging technology is a very very important thing without imaging technology the doctors can't able to predict anything with through this through the uh, through uh, the doctors naked eye the doctors can't able to see the doctors only see the external part the internal organ can be viewed only through the scanning devices okay without the scanning devices even the doctors are also not able to predict what so that is what the development is but the biomedical engineers are hard work hard at work developing the new and improved imaging options of course if i have a chance if i have a chance uh, i have to tell about the softwares used in the imaging that is also an advanced technology the siemens using the softwares the entirely different softwares than that of the g healthcare of course they are on the real leading uh, uh, radiological equipment manufacturers each and every day they are changing their coding they are giving the clarity about the particular equipment you know what the basic thing is image processing If you want to write the coding, if you want the basic thing, you need to know about the MATLAB. That is what. That is what the thing is. The technology called the back propagation. The technology called the reconstruction. If you know about the basics of MATLAB, if you know about the basics of C and C plus plus, okay, that will help you. That will help you. If you know about the simulation, if you know about the um, image processing, that will help. That coding will help to improve the imaging technology. They're not. and electronics behind it not an electronics behind it for the development of the software because the imaging all the imaging equipment all the imaging equipment whatever the however this particular imaging equipment emitting the radiations or non emitting the radiations the final output will exact it out through this particular softwares okay the 50 percentage the software play a main vital role in the imaging devices Okay, that imaging devices, softwares are also written by the engineers called the biomedical engineers. Some of them are in the, some of them are familiar in image processing, medical image processing. Some of them are experts in a uh, MATLAB programming coding. Or some of them are experts in a uh, simulation. Some of them are experts in a reconstruction, back, back propagation. All the things you are going to be studying in the second year or third year. So all these things are also a biomedical engineering job. Role. Okay, without this particular imaging, without with these particular softwares, without these kind of codings, we can't able to predict the exact 3D image of the internal organs. So that is what the next technology is imaging. Then, auto translation. For example, Japanese research. This is a recent, but Japanese researchers working on forms of medical virtual reality. Of course, of course, you are all well known about the virtual reality. virtual reality is now booming in healthcare everything whatever the technology is coming into the world that particular technology is entering into the healthcare without that there is no more the artificial intelligence is artificial intelligence is booming once it entering into the healthcare then it is an extraordinary field of course the machine learning of course the deep learning like that this virtual reality is just inventing for the gaming purpose just inventing for the gaming purpose but once this particular virtual reality is entering into the healthcare sector then it is uproar then it is in an uproar level through this virtual reality most of the chinese and the japanese people they find out they predict out what is happen without any wires without any bluetooth without any uh, scanning devices that particular person that doctors can able to view your brain 
the doctors can able to view your internal organs the doctors can able to view your snaps snaps is nothing but the connection between the two neurons through the virtual reality this happen which are, which would provide more accuracy and better outcomes in image guided surgery especially during the surgery this virtual reality gives the extra advantage to the doctors so many projects are are devoted to improve the cardiac and lung imaging giving physicians real time views of that so things happen because of the engineers so you should know about the technology about it okay so the basic thing you need to know about is for the imaging you should have a knowledge about the software developing you should have a knowledge about electronics of course if you come for the uh, development of the equipment if you want to make a ct machine almost 19000 19243 parts are there 19243 parts present in the ct machine the fourth generation ct machine there are so there are over five generation cts are there the fourth generation ct is an approved model fifth generation ct is called as an ebt that is actually a failure model the fourth generation ct includes a 19243 parts internally so that are all created by the electronic that can able to created by the electronics people of course you should have a knowledge about the electronics then you can able to troubleshoot that particular equipment how far this particular uh, uh, ct will work how far this particular ct will emit the radiations how far this particular ct attain the inclination that is rotation all the thing can be set it by the biomedical engineers okay so it includes a 50 percentage of equipment 50 percentage of electronics knowledge and also 50 percentage of software knowledge so that is what this imaging recent technology is of course you are talking about the virtual reality this is what the virtual reality is some of the surgery is going on major surgery is successfully completed through this particular virtual reality technology through this virtual te- reality technology we not require any wires we not require any scanning devices we are not spending much amount of uh, amount uh, much amount of cost to the uh, scanning devices even this particular virtual reality can able to give the exact condition of the patient internal organs so that is what the development that is what the development is this is why basically this virtual reality i already told you the basically this virtual reality is especially for gaming but nowadays once you are entering into the healthcare most of them most of them just think over it if the virtual reality is giving a, a extra advantage to the doctors to do the surgery if we make this particular virtual reality commencement over this particular robots then the robot using this particular virtual reality to do, do the surgery then what is the need of the doctors so that is what i'm keep on telling that within a 15 to within a 10 to 15 years the robot minded over this particular virtual reality and then find out what is that happen in the human internal organs and do the surgery then what is the need of the doctors then what is the need of the nurses so that is what the world is nowadays then of course the next technology i am talking about artificial intelligence of course everyone should aware about this because of course most of the companies most of the companies nowadays uh, uh, nowadays that uh, you just take a google google it and take a top 10 biomedical companies in the top 10 biomedical companies most of the companies almost almost 90% of the companies what you are saw over the top 10 list it is not a basically a healthcare company please remember philips philips is not a healthcare company general electricals is not a healthcare company siemens is not a healthcare company okay baxter is not a healthcare company bbron is not a healthcare company but nowadays even though they start funding their business towards the other sector all are electrical companies at the year of 1980s they find out the healthcare technology is booming nowadays the doctors require devices the patient require devices so like that they have start their business towards this particular healthcare technology they start funding their money but now most of the companies 90% of the worldwide companies of course toshiba now now it has changed to the canon canon of course you know that camera company that particular canon manufacturing ct now so that is what happens most of the companies they are start manufacturing the uh, healthcare technology devices what i why i am saying is now the sundar pichai of course you are all know about sundar pichai sundar pichai is the ceo of google he start 
funding this particular money towards the healthcare technology especially for this artificial intelligence he contact the sangar netralaya hospital in chennai he uh, he find out some of the uh, uh, extraordinary technology especially for the uh, non curable diseases like uh, retinopic pigmentosa there are so many non curable diseases are there retinopic pigmentosa retinopic dysmetosis all the things can able to get a solution using this artificial technology intelligence the google is start funding their money the google is start funding their money towards this artificial intelligence to determine to determine the solution of the uncurable diseases so that is what i am telling about all of them are towards the biomedical engineering especially healthcare technology okay so that is what this particular artificial intelligence and its application is dominating in conversion in conversion in all the industries all the industries especially in healthcare industry but perhaps none so much as healthcare that is what i am talking about most of the most of the recent technologies they include artificial intelligence machine learning in the uh, um, artificial intelligence is umbrella under that machine learning is there deep learning is there all the thing can able to make a surgery all the thing is required for the robot for the making of the robot so that is what the, that is what the technology nowadays is so the biomedical engineering is now already in the booming stage along with these particular technologies along with these particular technologies we can we are supposed to replace all the uh, health sector people only these people are required only these particular biomedical engineering people are biomedical engineering devices are required to predict whatever the disease it will be maybe a minor disease or major disease whatever it is this particular biomedical engineering devices can able to do that is what happened within a 10 to 15 years please go to point we have a research we have a research i have experience in 20 to 25 years in this field so we have an experience about it we have a, we done a research about this particular artificial intelligence and machine learning 10 to 15 years all the things will be happen so what i am telling us as you are as a biomedical engineer if you are in a second year or third year whatever it may be you should aware about the artificial intelligence of course in your university syllabus in your institution syllabus the artificial intelligence is not included that is what shock artificial intelligence is, intelligence is not included in the university syllabus i i gone through so many as uh, a university syllabus i i got shock why medical engineers are not supposed to study the artificial intelligence but my kind request is but my kind request is whatever even though you are uh, even your university not supposed to do artificial intelligence course please do it in some other way please do in some other way please do it in some other way you can able to go and uh, uh, search do some of the online course do some of the uh, uh, personal course for artificial intelligence because after the 5 to 6 years all the devices all the devices whatever you are going to see is along with the artificial intelligence that is what i am talking about excuse me okay then rising of artificial reality we are talking about okay the biomedical engineering and as a result biomedical engineering degree online programs have changed their focus away looking at single molecules and towards analyzing how entire networks of uh, molecules work together to create an entire system that is called an export technology that is called as an export system okay you you should aware about the neural networks that is called an export system the neural network using this particular artificial reality we can able to make the system with the networks so that is what happened you should have some of the practical knowledge because each and every equipments they are start manufacturing along with the artificial intelligence program and the machine learning technology so if you are not aware about this particular artificial intelligence and this particular virtual reality and this particular machine learning and the deep learning then what you are supposed to do so you my my kind request is my uh, i already i uh, we already uh, have suggested so many universities so many universities vice chancellors please uh, please uh, include an artificial intelligence to the biomedical engineers so that is what even though if you are not having a clarity about it you should do some of the online courses you should have the clarity about the, uh, some of the artificial intelligence expert you can able to get some of the knowledge about it because after of 10 to 15 years everything will be changed and this particular artificial intelligence play a main vital role most of the equipment they start manufacturing along with this particular technology that is what i am keep on telling this okay but you can't expect things stay the same of course this is as this is happen if the if the uh, whole spill thinks that the x ray is okay then the ct is not invented the mr is not invented or oh, that is what each and every day each and every day the thing is change Each and every day, the thing is changed. Somewhere in some corner of the world, 
some of them have a made a made adjustment of this particular equipment to announce as fda the fda is nothing but a food and drug administration that uh, that is in america they will approach they will uh, uh, send the uh, notification to the particular manufacturing sector to send into the market so that, that will give the approval so each and every day the fda announces at least each and every week the fda approval two to three biomedical equipments to the society so that is what happens it is not me you can't expect things to stay the same each and every day it will be changes for instance i told you the google the google's deep mind project is using both biomedicines and informatics to analyze the data related to the kidney disease patient in britain national health care service so that is what the ophthalmology the google targeted india especially in chennai sangar netralaya for the um, uh, urology for the urology that is a, nothing but a kidney diseases kidney related diseases they targeted about the britains the cardiology they they targeted about the belgium so each and every country the google approaching his technology approaching his ideas to the particular organ of the world. so that is what happens that is what happens each and everything what you are uh, seeing today is entirely changing what you are studying in four years of study once you have studied the four years of study after the fifth year in the fifth year what you are studying is entirely changed so that is what the basic foundation is very important the basic technological studies are very important thing to face the job market okay then the next technology the next recent technology i'm talking about is brain research of course most predictable organ in our human body unpredictable we can able to say unpredictable organ in a human body we can't able to predict what is happen exactly in this position that is a brain of course you are all know that brain control the all over organs all other organs nowadays you can able to read the mind of the person in front of you through the technology that is what the research is going on okay you can able to predict you can able to predict up uh, some of the thing the brain reminds one of the most mysterious parts of the human body and researchers are continuously involved in research designed to better understand it that is what because so many uncurable diseases are there in the brain okay so many uncurable diseases of course 1 million neuron 1 million neuron that is clustered over in the brain the 1.36 kg brain consists of 1 million neurons please remember if the 1 million with one neuron is got collapsed you need to replace that particular neuron how we can able to find out how we can able to find out in the, uh, the affected neuron in the 1 million neuron that is what the technology is that is what the technology is you can able to using the machine learning we can able to find out using the virtual reality we can able to find out but in the 10 years back in 15 years back we can't able to predict the doctor simply says he is affected by the brain disease simply say he da he does not give any any uh, suggestion to that he does not give any uh, uh, um, uh, advancement to that solutions to the particular patient so that is what the happen is this or all the technologies is going to be happen whatever the disease it may be we can able to find out the solution using the devices using the new technologies okay so that research in this area that is especially in the brain area i'm talking about research in this area is far reaching diseases uh, sorry diverse research is in china for instance are working on methods of restoring brain function after brain this issue this is using different forms of stimulation while others are working on the neural technology to power prosthetics of course of course we are all know that each and every part of the human body is controlled by the brain if any part the 0.01 mm area got damaged in the brain some of your parts will be collapsed the paralysis patient you can able to call okay so that is what the reason is that is what the reason is we need to find out the exact position where the particular neuron is affected by that is what we are talking about the neural technology we can able to find out exact neuron what is the affect where is the affected neuron exactly how we can able to change artificial neurons artificial neurons are start creating by the clinical engineers the artificial neurons are developed by some of the uh, researchers some of the researchers in german so that is what these are all the things happen each and every corners of the world the technology is booming okay especially i repeated this particular thing the methods of restoring brain function after brain diseases after the brain diseases the brain basically is affected by the disease he loses his memory 
the particular patient's memory will be restored by the neural network technology. How it has happened? We are like a god. We can able to restore the memory to them. So that is what happened. The doctors can't able to give. The doctors can't able to give without this particular technology. So that is what uh, the biomedical technology is there. And then uh, the most important thing we are talking about is wearable technology. So uh, wearable devices or wearable technology. Of course, you all well know that whatever we can able to wear nowadays, all the things is related to the healthcare. You are wearing, we are wearing smart watches. We can able to find out the pulse rate. We can able to find out the blood pressure. Okay, all the things in the smart watch. Even we can, we can able to wear the ring. Ring, we can able to, it can able to find out the pulse rate. All the things, whatever you can able to, we are, we are wearing shirt, the imprinted shirt in the internal, in the internal layer, it will connect it to the electrodes. That particular internal shirts will predict the ECG. That is a, a different parameters in your chest region and the abdominal region and the belts and the shoes. All the things, whatever we can able to wear, that particular wearable parts is linked to the healthcare to find out some of the vital parameters. So that is what the technology is. Each and every day, I already told you, uh, 25 percent, uh, 100 percent project, the uh, 15 to 20 percent of the project is wheelchair, and remaining 20 to 25 percent age, the uh, students can able to create some of the wearable devices, of course. Okay, so that is what uh, the wearable technology is, and then. This body of biomedical engineer are also part of the new wave of wearable devices that will have applications for beyond tracking your steps each day. That is what? How much steps you are going to step out? That particular devices will calculate each and every day how far your cholesterol level is, each and every day how far your glucose level is, each and every day, whatever. Whatever it should not be, we are not supposed to assist in any of the members. You are not supposed to go for the clinics. You are not supposed to go for the hospital. You can able to wear yourself. Watch, belts, shoes and everything. That are all give the information to your mobile for itself. Your pulse rate is now this. Your BMI is now this. Your cholesterol level is now this. Your uh, uh, digestive system uh, function is like that. All the things can able to display it through the mobile phone itself. Through this particular wearable technology. So how far the development is? Just think over it. Just think over how far this particular development is. You are not a simple the electronics people can't able to make this. The electronics people know about the pulse rate. The electronics people know about the heart function. Then only you can able to make the uh, smartwatch. So how we can able to make? How the particular electronics people can able to make? Only the biomedical engineers they know about the electronics and also along to the uh, human body organs. That particular person can able to make this particular wearable devices. All the wearable there are over. 21,000 wearable devices, small, small, small devices are there. Ring is there, triangles are there, band is there, uh, even uh, spectacles are there, uh, artificial teeth is there. There are so many things, there are so many wearable technologies are there to predict over the conditions of the particular patient. Okay, that is what happened. Wearable devices, I, I, I smarted out some of the uh, most important technology, wearable watches are there, smart watches are there, wearable belts are there, each and everything will uh, measure some of the most important vital parameters of the human body. Okay, that is what very important is. These are all the technologies developed not because of the electronics people or electrical people. One, once a person has some of the knowledge about the human anatomy, once a person has knowledge about the physiology of the organ, that particular person, uh, the person has some of the knowledge about the vital parameters of the human body, that sort of the person only can able to make these kind of diseases. Not electronics people, electrical people can able to do this. So that is what the biomedical technology is. Of course, the next technology I am talking about, the recent technology is bioprinting. What you are seeing in the seeing in the slide is, of course, you are you are all can able to see the slides, right? I am keep on talking. Any reply? You are all. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. You mute yourself. So what you are seeing in this display is an artificial ear. Of course, the 3D printing as like as a virtual reality. The virtual reality is uh, especially uh, inventing for the gaming purpose as like as this 3D printing. The 3D printing is especially for making some of uh, uh, the construction work. Construction work they are using for the 3D printing. Some of the other works they are uh, for the electrical purpose, electronic purpose, they are all making some of the uh, 3D, they are using that particular 3D printing technology. But our healthcare people will 
acquired this particular 3D printing technology towards the health care by the way of bioprinting. We can able to print your internal organs. If you want to replace the particular internal organs with an artificial organ, using this particular bioprinting, we can able to replace. I already told you before the bioprinting, uh, biomechanics play a main vital role. We can able to make each and every uh, basic measurements of the particular internal organs. Then only we can able to uh, replace a particular natural organ with artificial organ. This particular bioprinting, using this particular bioprinting, I'm not saying 100 percentage uh, this particular thing can able to replace into the natural organ. I am saying that, for example, if the person have uh, if the person have uh, uh, disabilities, the person have an abnormality in their heart. Okay, please remember. He is injured. He is injured with the, uh, for example, he went to an accident. He injured in the knee. Okay, please remember, he injured in the knee. And the doctor, what the, what the next thing happen is, the doctors are asked them to uh, uh, take a scan. Okay, what I am saying is, using this particular technology, using this particular technology, that particular scanning devices, that particular scanning devices will give some of the results. Okay, using the particular results, using that particular image that is a back propagation and a reconstruction image that particular image will be given as an input to the 3d printer please remember given as an input to the 3d printer that particular 3d printer what it will do is whatever that particular printed sheet is have this will create the organ the artificial artificially made an organ without using without seeing that particular imaging through the imaging the doctors can able to predict where the exact problem is through this particular organ, through this particular device, that is a 3D printed organ. Okay, without seeing the images, through this particular um, uh, 3D printed uh, material, the doctors can able to predict where the exact problem is. Okay, that is what the development is. Nowadays, what is the, the new technology is, not even go for the scan. We are conducting a we are conducting a, a 3D printing a workshop to, uh, um, in the February I think so. So using the mobile phone, he can able to take a photograph of you, photograph of your uh, thumb, a photograph of your uh, uh, fingers. That particular photograph is enough to make your fingers exactly as like you. Okay, as like as your natural uh, 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 hands. That particular photograph. Through using this particular technology that is 3D printer, it will within a one hour and one and a half hour, it will print it. It will print it and give some of the material as like as you are the same length, the same depth, the same pinpoints. All the thing is available in the 3D printing created uh, device. So that can able that can able to done that will uh, help for the doctors can able to predict the some of the operation. For example, if if, uh, if the person has some of the uh, if a person need some of the surgery in the brain, the cranial, the scanning devices give some of the information. The MRI give some of the information. Using that particular MRI image, we can able to take for the we can able to take uh, we can able to create a printed devices using this 3D printer. Then the doctors. Keep the particular brain in their in their hand. Then he predict where we can able to make a surgery, make a surgery. Where we can able to make a cut of it. What is the distance between this particular injured part and from the external? All the thing externally he can able to make a plan using this particular 3D printing technology. That is bioprinting technology we can able to call for. So that is what the technology is. That is what the technology is uh, a development. So this is a process actually. This is a process of uh, how we can able to take a machine. Especially this is also if you want to make a, a 3D printer, 3D printing organ. If you want to make a bioprinting organ for the internal purpose. We, we we can able to use some of the biocompatible material. The biocompatible materials are so many things available. Some of the pharmaceutical pharmaceuticals and some of the biomaterials, especially uh, ceramic implants. All the things can be used in this particular bioprinting for the replacement of the internal organ. This is a process we can able to attain using this particular uh, technology. And then 3D printing organs we can able, I already told you. Using this particular organ, printed organ, the doctor exactly find out where the problem of the patient is exactly. Where the hole is. Where the uh, blood collapse. Where the blood is stuck over. All the things through this particular printed organs, the doctors can able to predict. Okay, so this is the technology. So the, we can able to create, we can able to create 80 to 90 percentage of the internal organs, internal and external organs using this printer. 
okay that is what the technology is the printer the 3d printer that is used for the making of the internal organs that process is called the bio printer that process is called a bio printer the technology we are going to use the technology is nothing but we are getting a, a back propagation or a, um reconstructed image to the uh, particular printer that is a technology that technology is called as the bio printing technology that is also very important and this particular thing is also not in the syllabus of your uh, i know so that is what these are all the things you need to catch over externally not only the books give anything not only the uh, books give a 100 percentage clarity about biomedical engineering okay use your nets properly you uh, google it properly okay these are all the technologies available externally okay these are all the technologies available externally along with the, your studies along with your books along with your subjects these are all the things as also you need to give concentrate not only you can able to face the job market okay uh, because the job market is especially uh, the competition is much more the competition is much higher and higher every day gradually is increasing so if you want to if you want to differ yourself from others you should have some of the knowledge about these kind of technologies basic knowledge about these kind of technologies okay that is what i'm talking about and then and all the other things we are uh, claiming about the clinical engineering i already told you uh, in some other countries especially european countries the biomedical engineers are called as a clinical engineers but in nowadays in uh, in south asia people in india bangladesh pakistan and uh, in uh, some of the african countries the clinical engineering is entirely a different discipline from the biomedical but of course it is belong to the healthcare of course it is belong to the 90% it is belong to the healthcare department the thing is what what how we can able to differ is they are all dealing with the cell biologies the biotechnologies the nanotechnologies the nano level study of human organs the nano level study of human organs that's especially we can able to call for the next thing next slide you can able to give the clarity okay the clinical engineers are nothing but the nano level studies especially for cell biologies the cell tissues the genetic engineering the genomics micro and nano fabrications the bioinformatics all the things that are coming under this particular clinical engineer of course biogenomics the genetical type of genetical engineering is a vast umbrella under that we can able to go for biogenomics that is called as a genetic biology that is all that is also one of the sub domain of the biomedical engineering okay, that is also one of the sub domain that biogenomics is also requires so many equipments through the equipments only the uh, the genomic people can able to find out the cells and everything so all the things can be manufactured selling all the things can be done by the biomedical engineers okay then this is what i'm talking about the stem cell nowadays under the clinical engineering it is coming under the clinical engineering this uh, uh, genomics and stem cells are coming this stem cells the stem cells give the solutions to the uncurable diseases i already told you through the artificial intelligence and through the artificial intelligence technology and through the machine learning and deep learning some of the uncurable diseases can be predicted by the google russia china and some of the uh, leading companies the leading companies in the healthcare especially korea japan they are all give the treatment to the uncurable diseases through this particular stem cell therapy okay even some of the uh, nowadays covid 19 if it is possible there the stem cell therapy give the solution they we made a research they made a research the research is going on so all the things all the things also it is coming under the clinical engineering the clinical engineering is sub domain of the biomedical engineering please don't forget we are not only dealing with the equipments we are not we are not only dealing with the devices we are not only dealing with the uh, hospitals we are also dealing with the research if we want to do the research if you want to if you want to enter into uh, uh, inventing some of the new thing then you coming under the research technology that is clinical engineering if you are entering into the clinical engineering these are all the things you need to require using the stem cell therapy there are so many uh, therapeutic treatments are available using the stem cell okay the stem cell banks are available nowadays in bangalore it is there stem cell banks are there so all the things that we have so what is the next thing i am talking about is till now till now i am talking about the recent technologies and everything that i i am i am i am pointed out some of the most important technology only i am pointed out some of the most important technology only there are so many other technologies are also there there are so many other technologies are also there but because of the sort of time i am giving you also the top list of the recent technologies okay so what is my next point is what is my next point is if you want to know about all these things if you want to know about all these things 
the basic foundation is very very important if you are face the job market if you are, once you are crossed over the four years of study if you are not have any basic knowledge about biomedical engineering then it is very tough to catch a job because in the interview they are not ask the questions of and they are not ask the questions in a, a advanced base they are asking the basic questions so the basic things can able to learn in the four years of engineering study that is a very important thing so this particular biomedical engineering biomedical engineering even though you have crossed over 40 to 45 subjects along with the practical and the theoretical in the engineering study the four important subjects that is very important for the biomedical engineers those who are going to uh, going for the job or going for the research or whatever it may be or if you want to become an entrepreneur the four important thing you need to know about it, the basic foundation the basic knowledge of that particular four things is very useful for you to face the market that four things i listed off first of all human anatomy of course the doctors know about 100 percentage of your human body my point is you should aware about the 75 percentage of the human body the nano level anatomy is not required okay you need to know about the each and every uh, external anatomy of the human organ and the physiology of the human organ complete study not a uh, uh, not basic in the sense you need to go some deep some more somewhat deeper not as like as a doctor but somewhat deeper you need to know about it okay that is what the human anatomy human anatomy is a very important thing and uh, uh, most of the universities they are fixing this human anatomy subject in the third semester or fourth semester but the most important thing is once the once the person is crossed over the four years of study he forget what is the function of the heart so that is what you keep on remembering you are keep on remembering about human anatomy because the only difference between the electrical people electronics people and the biomedical people is this human anatomy so you should strong about it. you should know about it. because there some of the critical terms are there in the medical all the things coming under this human anatomy so you should aware about basic foundation is very important not for the fake not for the uh, clearing of the paper or not for getting the grade this human anatomy is important this human anatomy is your life if you want to become a uh, sales engineer or service engineer or application engineer whatever it is you should have some of the basic knowledge then only because whatever the job designation it may be your main customer is doctors if you want to talk if you want to talk about the devices to the doctors the doctor the doctor does he know the electronics so if you want to sell the particular product to the doctor so you should have some anat- anatomical approach is very important and now through the anatomical approach only the doctors can able to understand what has happened okay that is what the anatomical approach is very important so that anatomical approach you should have some of the basic anatomy for each and every anatomy the each and every organ you should know about because each and every organ requires some of the different sort of equipment so anatomy play a main vital role okay then the first thing is anatomy then basic electronics basic electronics basics of electronics is very 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 important even though you, you are not so you are not learning about the advanced electronics you should have a strong basic foundation in basics of electronics basics of electronics in the sense i am saying what is resistor what is capacitor what is inductor that is what i am saying the basic laws the basic theorems the basic approach the basic formulas the basic circuits the basic uh, softwares that are using in uh, electronics all the things you should have strong about there are over 10 plus electronic softwares are there for making a circuit okay that are all that are all the thing very important that are all the thing very important you should have strong about it because once you are making a equipment you should have knowledge about 50% of electronics and 50% of human anatomy that is what very important okay so that is what the basic electronics as like as other human anatomy in the third semester and fourth semester only you crossed over this electrical circuits and everything during the third year and final year you forgot so that thing should not be happen don't study everything for the exam study everything for your future so electronics play a main vital role each and every small equipment even a small stethoscope even a small stethoscope have some of the electronics even a small digital thermometer have some of the electronics sensors bio sensors transducer what is transducers all are electronics so that too, the basic foundation is very important the basic foundation is very important the second thing you need to remember is after the human anatomy 
you should have some of the basic knowledge about electronics and then instrumentation basic instrumentation along with electronics you should aware about instrumentation what is the difference between an instrumentation and electronics of course if you know about the components electrical and electronic components if you want to make a device this instrumentation knowledge is very important i talking about the basic of electronics is nothing but the last theorems components and everything if you want to use that particular basic components to make a device or to make an instrument this instrumentation knowledge is very important okay so this particular how we can able to make a circuit how we can able to get an output if you, if you, if the particular circuit is not get an required output then what are all the changes we need to do it and what are all the input we need to we are supposed to do it all the things that are all coming under the instrumentation that are all not coming under the electronics okay using the electronic component using the basic components if you want to make a device this instrumentation knowledge is very important what is how we can able to replace it how we can able to replace this resistor into other how we can able to uh, use this particular uh, amplifiers how we can able to change the uh, transistor you can analyze the electronic circuits can be analyzed to functioning according to your uh, required output required output the basic instrumentation we can able to call uh, uh, in under the control system also also the control system is also coming under this particular basic instrumentation because so many uh, functions the so many devices are coming under the biomechanics devices are coming under this uh, principle of control system you are crossed over bio control system that bio control system is very uh, very useful for making any prosthetic devices of course okay if you want to make a required output because if you want to make a device that device is especially for required output it that that particular device should attain the required output that required output can be done by this particular equipment if you are using the control system technology control system principle only this particular devices will give the required output some of the devices will give required output so, uh, not for all some of the diagnosis this is a some of the diagnosis equipment not give the required output but some of the therapeutical devices some of the assistive devices some of the um, wearable devices so that particular devices will give some of the required output if any of the devices will give the required output here the required output can be given by the principle of bio control system okay that is what this particular basic instrumentation is also important and now coming under this particular bio control system is also coming under the basic instrumentation the analysis if you want to make a analysis of the devices if you want to make analysis of the circuit that are all coming under this instrumentation so please remember the third important thing is basic instrumentation under that you need to know about bio control system bio mechanics and instrumentation that is diagnostic and therapeutic instrumentation all the things that you are going to study okay that are all very important then human vital parameters you should know about the normal and abnormal range there are over 49 49 plus vital parameters are available in a human body so you should know about what is the normal range and what is the abnormal range okay there are so many things you should aware about i am talking about what is alpha what is beta what is theta these are all the coming under what eeg what is the exact range what is the alpha r wave says about it and what is the peak rs wave form what is the range of the r for the normal person what is the and uh, r or interval of the normal person okay the deep Uh, vital parameters the deep anatomy the deep uh, uh, vital parameters knowledge that is what we, I, i'm not saying about what is the heart rate what is the pulse rate that is the basic thing apart from this apart from this deep level okay deep level, what is the signal analysis i'm talking about the signal or pulse rate the pulse rate in the sense not talking about the uh, numerical terms how we can able to apply the particular pulse rate to the particular person can able to acquire so all the things all this vital parameter 49 plus vital parameters are there in a human body in that 45 percentage are the signal analyzer so you need to know about the signal analyzing properly okay you need to know about the frequency level you need to know about the time duration because each and every small point one second duration will like will give changes to the human organ so that is why for example or our interval if you are gone for 0.12 0.12 seconds if it is gone for point 10 seconds or if you gone for point 13 second it will give the abnormal range of the human heart signal so that is what the small level thing is also very important the vital parameters so 
the parameter analysis of each and every human body human organ is also very important so that is what if you are strong in these four areas that is basics of human anatomy basics of electronics basic instrumentation under that there are so many thing happen okay under that there are so many subdomains are there and then human vital parameters these are all the four external parameters there are all the four external streams you should have strong in the basics if you are strong in the basics then you are considered as a 95% you are a perfect biomedical engineer you can able to make a device you can able to analyze the device you can able to test the device whether it is uh, right or wrong you can able to uh, create a, a new machine you can able to create a prosthetic devices you can able to create a, a stem you can able to make a stem cell therapy to any any of the uh, uh, diseases so what sort of the thing if you are strong in this four areas if you are strong in this four areas then only you are a perfect biomedical engineer okay all these things all these four thing what i mention is already there in the subject of your that is syllabus or your um, institution or university so you are strong about it okay then so of course uh, all the things there are these are all the companies these are all the uh, um, within the slide i am just listed out some of the companies these are all the leading biomedical companies most of the companies are in india so leading biomedical companies they are manufacturing so many healthcare uh, products healthcare uh, devices all the things so if you are aware about it if you are aware about it each and every companies is also very important the next thing companies and what the product the particular company is manufactured all the thing is also very important then only it is very easy for approach your job towards it okay that is what uh, that is what my uh, a uh, suggestion is i am clearing about i hope i clearing about uh, the recent technologies and uh, the recent uh, thing what are the things you are going to need and you are supposed to acquire the knowledge about all these things are very important so all the best for uh, uh, the participants those who are uh, <coughs> listening my uh, lecture and thanks a lot uh, mr shyam kumar thanks a lot mr shyam kumar and dr uh, vijay lakshmi madam and thanks to the management of uh, sri uh, manakula vinayaka So well, now I am open the session for asking queries. Don't uh, put anything in the chat box. If you are, if you have any doubt, please ask me directly. Hello, sir. Before feedback, I would like to say thank you for you. Uh, so you have covered everything that is uh, starting from advancement, recent trends, and also you have insisted uh, uh, the students to take care of all the basics. Thanks to you, sir. So one thing I want to tell, sir. Sir. Are you listening, sir? Is my yeah, voice yeah, audible, yeah, sir? Yeah. Uh, sir, actually, we got autonomous status, sir, uh, from the academic year 2019 to uh, 2029. Ten years academic. Uh, for the total ten years, we have got autonomous status. So we have revised the syllabus. We have included artificial intelligence, machine learning, IoT, everything yes, in the yes, curriculum sir. itself, sir. So you are told no. Uh, that's yeah, that is what. That is what. That is what the technology is. After ten years. the students if you are going for the job and everything if they have a knowledge about uh, these things then only you can able to compete in the market okay sir that, that's what i want to tell you sir so we have included everything all the advanced uh, things what we have to include in the curriculum we have included everything in our curriculum and syllabus sir nice nice yes uh, now the students you can ask queries Also, if you guys have any clarifications, if you are not asking uh, through this particular webinar, also you can able to ask the uh, um, through your faculty members or whatever it may be. So I can able to clear your doubts whenever it is. Okay. Um, somebody asked. Uh, yeah, rather you are put it in the chat box straight away. You can able to throw the questions. That may be better. Thank you, Mr. Shyam Kumar. Do you have any doubts? No sir, no sir, no sir. I am clear about this topic, sir. No yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, I take this opportunity to put put all my gratitude into words. On behalf of Sri Manakula Vinayagar Engineering College, I thank management, director, and principal, HOD of Biomedical Department, and the faculty members for the constant support. And you have given us a lot of encouragement. Thank you, ma'am. I would like to thank our honourable resource person, Mr. S. Sathina Milagi Pandian, for accepting. 
to sharing his knowledge in a short period of time in the recent trends in biomedical engineering i particularly liked the way he expressed from the evolution of the recent trends thank you sir for thank you for giving this wonderful opportunity to the students for this yes, thank you sir i hope all the students gain the knowledge regarding the advancements in the biomedical engineering and also the role of the importance in the biomedical engineering in the healthcare last but not least i want to thank all the participants for attending this guest lecture and making this a grand success once again i thank you all for this guest lecture sir okay students kindly ask some queries this is entirely for the beneficiary to gain knowledge for you okay so kindly interact with the guest lecture kindly interact with the resource person uh, not only about the topics we covered and uh, also get some knowledge about what are the queries you have in the biomedical section okay so some of the person some of the students and most of the persons are encouraged uh, they are not clear about what is biomedical engineering so kindly get clear with the resource person if you have any queries kindly contact him and kindly do interact with him thank you sir thank you for once again thank you sir for giving this wonderful opportunity for our students thank you sir thank, thank you very much thank you very much sir thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you dr vijayalakshmi madam Uh, thanks thank for you, the management sir. and all the participants thank you sir thank you sir we would like you to meet you in our institute soon sir thank you sir sure. Sure, yes sure. sir after this pandemic has been over we would like to continue to do a workshop sir so we would like to do a some workshop yeah we'll so see we will we'll invite see, we'll you sir, sir. Yeah. thank you sure, sir thank you sir yeah sure. thank you sir thank you thank you vijay lakshmi madam thank you sir